appreciate y'all. And hopefully y'all learn something from it. Yeah, I felt that. You felt it? Yeah. That's cool. My name is Emmanuel Pago. I mean, uh, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Been here in Lexington for 11 years. Married, got four kids, three, three daughters. God bless me with the son for the last time, so I'm really happy. All right, so um, what you see is what you get. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty straightforward. I respect you as long as you respect me. Okay. A little shadow from the back. People on the side of his driver's side of his car. Okay? Now he's chilling. <laughs> he, he just notices it. He don't know what's going on, but he's just paying attention. Now, yeah, Preston, he's, you know what I'm saying? He's in the streets. He's doing what he's doing. Okay? But at the same time, he carried a pistol. He just ain't carrying it tonight. Okay? Because he, he ain't carrying it. He, 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 he ain't carrying it tonight. Okay? His gun's at home. Now, Preston. Preston wasn't really in the streets for real, but you know, he kept protected because of where he lived, okay? So, all of a sudden, this guy walked on the side of his car, driver's side of his car, and gets to the window. And he looks up, and he said, nigga, what's poppin' with you? <laughs> so, Pre so, Pre so Preston said, man, what's poppin' with you, man? I'm down, I'm down here just waiting on my peoples, you know? So he started beeping the horn, trying to get some attention. Mind is he don't got no gun, none of that. He's in the old school, too, so, when you can't just crack up the, crack, crank up the car, Okay, and it's old school, you gotta, you know, uh, and they start pumping the gas. So it, he ain't about to get away like that. So as the guys on the outside of his car looking at him, he takes a, he takes a drink from his cup. He takes a drink from his cup when he, he's holding pistol in his hand. So now he's looking at Preston in the window holding his pistol. Nigga was popping, what's going on? And so Preston's trying to think, he got to think quick. Preston jumps out the passenger window of the car. When he jumped out the first shot, going to the hood of the car. He shoots at Preston. Preston ducks down and picks his phone up. So he didn't get it. Preston runs off to the up the street. He shoots four more times. Preston get hit. Now he drops to the floor. Preston's on the ground. At this point, he's shot. At this point, he's shot. He's only two months out of, out of high school. Okay? He don't know what's going on. Thank y'all, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Give him a round of applause, y'all. Point. Press is on the ground, shot. He thinks, man, God, is this my, is it, is it my time to go? Is this how I'm about to leave, right? He felt no strength. He got up. He hopped off. Made it to the intersection. Hit a couple cars. Bang on them. He went to the first car, pull up. It was good. What's happening? Now I've been shot. They ride off on him. Old police officer, white police officer. He's in the hood. The white guy jumped out the car, man. What's up? He's out been shot. He helps him out. Found out only, um, first of all, he got shot in the butt cheek, man, so he's good. He didn't get shot in his back. He thought he did, though, because his whole leg went out. He got shot in the butt. Just stopped at his belt. But they said if it was an inch over, he would have been paralyzed. Preston, you leave. Y'all, that's the story of me, man. This is the night, of the, uh, the night I called the police after I got shot. And I found out that uh, I, got I didn't get shot at four times. I got shot at 13 times. Police was questioning me as if I knew who shot me. They asked me, who shot you, man? I'm like, I don't know. I called my mom, I've been shot. While I'm on the phone, the police officer snatched the phone from me, hung up on my mom. So that's the last thing she heard. Y'all gonna see a lot of the, a lot of a lot of different things in life, man. Y'all gonna experience so much more. I know y'all got goals and aspirations. Y'all wanna do something you get Which one do you get over, bro? I don't know. Ain't really thought about that before, right? That's cool. That's cool. What about you? Uh go to school for education. Education? That's good. You chose education for a reason. Why? Because I feel like there's a shortage of African American male teachers. Okay, that's good. When, while you're speaking, if you don't mind, just so that my camera can hear you, I would like y'all to speak up. Have ownership behind your voice. Okay? Because when you own your position, you take it. Okay? You own who you are, you take it. You take what's yours. Ain't nobody gonna take what's yours. And that's what this life is to me. I meant to be here. Dude that was shooting at me that night couldn't take my life because it wasn't meant for him to take. That's why I'm still here. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that in every situation. Some of us are here for a short period of time. Some of us are here to make an impact in somebody else's life. Okay? And that's real. A lot of people, you look around this room, this small, small group of y'all. All right, small group of y'all, but look around this room. Some of these people you might not see 15 years from now. I got, I got, I got, I'm gonna ask you to do something for me. Everybody that's taller than 5'5", five, five, please stand up. All right, so everybody that's not taller than 5'5", five, five, I 
the only reason I picked y'all because I'm five, I'm five five. So I don't like y'all. So I want to, I want to make y'all stand up. <laughs> y'all represent this, the, the percentage of uh, 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 the percentage for statistics. Okay, whatever that percentage is, that's what y'all represent. That percentage, half of y'all gonna be dead before you hit eighteen. Half of y'all gonna be incarcerated. The other half of y'all gonna be on government assistance. And then one of y'all gonna have babies. And the other one gonna have like five or ten kids be on welfare. That's that's what that's what your, your life your life is already planned out for you. Due to statistics. Alright, everybody stand up here. Bro, I tell you something. Hold on, when you walk past. Oh, you walk past. Now you can walk past. You walk past now, man. I don't like Bob. He's still home. <laughs> He's still home. All right. All right. So look, y'all wrote something down for me, right? Yes, sir. All right. So let me hear what you what you wrote. I said be an engineer, or plumber, or might even be a construction worker. But I also thought about doing music. Okay. Cool. You yeah. Think you got also music. All right. That's good. Everybody, give me a round of applause. That's good. Okay. Um, in the future. I'll be uh, going to the Marines, but also playing football in the Marines and go pro become Hall of Famer. Okay, cool. Young lady, what about you? Um, I say I would like to major in criminal justice and play softball. Okay. I see myself working and helping out my family. Okay, everybody give me a round of applause. Right Alright, so that's what y'all future. That's what y'all want y'all future, right? Somebody give you what your future really is. Alright, there we go, there we go, thank you so much. Alright, perfect. Alright, you hold that. Alright? Went to a party on um, the weekend, we got shot. Oh, they're right there, they're right there. Didn't hey, make it past 18. This is, he has four kids, he works 9 to 5, make a minimum wage, married, working towards being. Um, his own boss when they heard his five kids, no husband, no job, pregnant with six with six child. Read his. Read his out loud, please. Yes. Went to college, got a great job, got married, got a lot of money, got into a bad car accident, and now he's paralyzed. Now understand this. These are completely made up, but these are real scenarios. These are things that really can happen. Okay? We had never know what our future has planned for us. But if you put yourself in a position, Thank you guys, appreciate it. Give me a round of applause. But to have these plans in front of you, to have goals, to have something that you want to get to, that's that's the that's the that's the secret. I'm sure that if we if we know the date of our expiration, we might move different. We might try to get to something a little quicker. You see what I'm saying? We all got a dash. That little thing that's on our tombstone from the day we was born. To the date that we die. We all got that little dash. You, you barely can see it when you look at the tombstone, right? It's a smaller dash between. You. Just think of that word. It's amazing how it works out like that. Life is a dash. You only know where last week went. You know what I mean? That's how quick your life will move. So if you're not planning, and if you're not trying to get nowhere, by the time you're 30, you're gonna be in the same situation you was in. Only thing different, you ain't gonna be in school. You ain't got nobody protecting you from the real world. Alright? So there's there's a success equation and a life equation that I like to go by. I heard it, I heard it from, from some philosopher. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I didn't make this up. E plus R equals O. Anybody know what that means? Can you guess what it might mean? Event plus response equals outcome. There's going to be events in your life, okay? And depending upon the response that you give that event, dictates your outcome. Event plus response equals outcome. E plus R equals O. It's real. I'm telling you, if you move that way, your life will be a lot better, man. I promise you. You just be conscious in the moment. Be conscious in the situation. Like, okay, okay, I got an opportunity. To, I had an opportunity to kill the person that, that shot me. I did, very well so. That's an event. Now, I didn't know about event plus art and outcome like back then, but I was a little more constant than others. And my homies, we used to, I mean, my, my one partner was like, hey, let's, man, we gotta come right over here and do this or something, something. I'm like, bro, you only want to get done. And you want me to, like, bro, we ain't about to go in there, somebody not coming out alive, that's it. And I'm going back home, I'm gonna cook. 
she always making some good food, bro. You tripping. Like, what we really gonna do? I mean, if you want me to ride, we gonna ride, but we outside the people's house at this point. And he said, bro, dudes inside there. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, we only got a gun. Where's all ours at? What we gonna do? Now, I'm, I'm telling you this story just to tell you, like, you gotta, you gotta, there's people that uh, in your circle that be that, that voice of uh, reason, okay? Have you ever had that one homie like, man, nah, bro, it's probably ain't gonna take a smart move. Them are meant to be leaders. Those people are meant to be great. We just gotta learn how to be great and where to be great at. And where to use that, that skill. It might, we just might be caught in a situation. Unfortunately, we're caught in a disenfranchised situation. Okay, a lot of times. When we were free, a lot of times, after we were free, I, I, I learned this when I was in, um, when I was in college, man, I went to school to try to get a business, get a business, man, business degree. And that didn't work out. I had a family to take care of, so I couldn't finish it. But uh, this is my second time going to school. But I learned a lot while I was in there. They had me looking up Wall Street, okay? With John P. Rockefeller, J, you know, J.P. Morgan, and all that stuff. You know, and I ended up coming across this. This is the Black Wall Street. We moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma, after everybody was becoming free, and got businesses, man. We had, what, what did it say? We had 600 businesses. We had 21 uh, churches, 21 restaurants, 30 grocery stores, two movie theaters, six private planes, plus hospitals, banks, post offices, libraries, and schools. That's powerful, ain't it? We ain't got none of that now. All the wealth that you see in black and black, the black communities, we ain't got, we, we barely even got that. But don't you think that would be a good, a better move, a better situation if we tried to do stuff like that. Um, and the reason why I visit that, this is not taken away from any other race. The reason why I say this is because right now, the ones that are dying are y'all. Young black African American males. The girls are kind of safe. Y'all are safe. Okay, but at the same time, it is, it, yes, barely. <laughs> barely, like she said, barely. The ones that are at risk, the ones that are coming extinct are y'all. And my, my move is to try to help y'all make the change. Whether that's you being the next person to say, hey, look, man, let me give you the cheat code. That's what this is. This all this is, the cheat code. I'm just going to let you know, hey, I'm going to hand it off to you. Now, if you want to use it, it's up to you. 